Hello everyone, this is Domina Mara, and this video is on how to become my personal submissive. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so that you know when new videos come out. Follow my Instagram and Twitter accounts at Mara Domina for daily news and fresh projects. And let's go. The road to being mine is a very long and arduous one that requires dedication, hard work, and patience. I find loyalty incredibly sexy, especially in this day and age of instant gratification. Submissives who revere me to be their shining light, inspiring them to go above and beyond our sessions to ensure my days go extra smoothly without me even asking or commanding them means the world. Being my personal sub means unconditional love. This means you do any task I give you to the best of your ability without complaint and adapt to my person. Initial negotiations can be had such as only financial tasks, nothing to do with money at all, a bit of one or both. We can always revisit negotiations when necessary on either end. Note that those who do not end up paying tribute will labor even more intensely using skills they have accumulated in their lifetime. All of your resources will be mine and I will access them when I see fit. I will train you with protocols to be able to think ahead and be proactive to offer tasks or suggestions that will benefit my lifestyle before I even think of them or command them from you. This is about how to better my life and in turn, I will benefit yours by continuing our evolution in kink together. I'm not here to sort your life out or to babysit you. I'm here so that we can both peak at our greatest potential. The longer you stay with me, the more integrated you will be in my life and hopefully one day owned. I don't seek subs who message me constantly telling me how amazing and beautiful I am and wanting to meet with me all the time. I don't get off on your flowery words or how you want to play with me because I'm your perfect dom. It only means something when a sub actually commits to a booking. You are here to serve me and let me express myself through kink. And that, in turn, is sexy and gets me off immediately. I had a so-called sub tell me I was worth more than what I charge for a meet and greet. And when it came down to actually scheduling the date, he then told me he did not have disposable income. I am a luxury, even though I am considered to be a necessity to some people. This Insta sub is on one end of the spectrum next to this example of a sub who lost my contact information after I left the dungeon that I started at. He then found me two years later via advertising and wrote a heartfelt message about how I ruined sessions for him with other mistresses because I spoiled him in the little time we had together. He is now paying double what he used to because he finds me a necessity of a release in a life that no one else in the world can bring. I have many subs ask me if they can clean my place for me. Almost all of these are made fetishists. Maids are the ultimate service sub which differ from a butler, which is what I actually seek. I don't want someone lower than me touching my things. I have also failed to see someone clean as diligently as I do despite training. Fund my new play space and then we can begin with cleaning that to see if you get to do more. I also don't want subs knowing where I live unless they are chauffeuring me relatively close to the area. Chauffeuring is in line with the butler concept, and I definitely need Alfred's in my life. I had one sub who got close to being this, and I miss him to this day. I typically allow subs who are already paying for sessions to apply to serve personally. The initial training period lasts for about one full year before I determine whether or not to continue. Obviously, if things aren't working out in initial months, I can call it. Personal relations outside of sessions are always second in priority, and that is more of an exchange of skills. Driving, opening doors, serving me lunch, picking up items, making reservations for me, cleaning my boots and shoes, assisting in photo and film shoots, developing web solutions, and so on. The exchange is equal in my eyes, not absolute. Equal exchange is me deeming what is equal, not you. 
Absolute exchange would be one hour for one hour, and that does not exist in my world. You can expect as much as a 30 to one ratio, and I don't need to tell you who is the 30. I aim to play with personals once a month in reward for their service in the 30 days. Note, this does not have to be daily, but it is at least weekly. I only include more time should I feel like you deserve it, or a social event occurs and I give you the honor of attending with me. Don't be a greedy sub. I expect to be served exclusively and religiously like I'm church. And if you have mastered all of my rites and rituals, then we can talk about you serving another mistress beginning with tasks. If you are just a fetishist, ignore this. I am talking about DS servitude. Speaking about religion, I have had subs call it Maraism to worship my goddess essence. I don't believe in religion, but I do see BDSM spiritually and usually get acknowledgement from my work. A stellar example are mantras written by past subs for themselves to pray to me in the morning when they think of me during the day and before they go to bed in the evenings. Another sub wrote out actual sayings they repeated in order to really envision me while they are serving me or when I cannot physically be in their presence. I don't ever push that on other people. This is just how these subs wanted to start the day. I loved these ideas they put on themselves and I encourage subs to do whatever it takes to keep me in their mind. All the things you do will be rewarded in some way as I am a just and fair leader. Due to this, some kinksters have called me too nice before. Being nice doesn't make you any less dominant, man or woman. In fact, it's hotter. There's a sensibility in being kind and choosing battles. I can coerce someone with honey rather than vinegar, and fear comes out of nowhere or creeps up on you, which is not healthy for long term. I see friendliness as a strength. You're confident enough to be nice, but not to step all over everyone, unless they consented to that in lifestyle and or play. Being a dick just shows insecurity or large amounts of ego or both. Some people fetish these personalities and again, great if consensual and awesome for playtime. This doesn't mean be a dick to everyone else around you outside of play. Just because I'm nice doesn't mean I can't be firm. There are lines that can still be crossed, but it is how I deliver my judgment or punishment. I never have to raise my voice in session, unless it's for role play, because the sub has to quiet themselves if they want to be able to hear my commands properly, if they don't want to get in trouble for not following my directions. There's a lovely juxtaposition of having a sweetness to the sadistic actions I'm about to pull on my submissives as well. This level of niceness depends on my mood and our dynamic. I do want to add that sometimes subs fail or the relationship fades and they need to take a break or break it off completely. This is okay. You will be okay. As a dominant, it may be sad, but I have always kept it in the back of my mind that the expiration of a relationship is always a possibility. Like a marriage, if it stays until someone passes away, they still have to go eventually, and that too will be sad. Just know that both of you have learned, take those lessons and keep going. Don't ever let it stop you. If a sub fails, that means I have failed in training them properly, or they were never interested in actually serving and that would not fit my true needs. Like a boss at work, if subs cannot improve, and continue to make the same mistakes that after I have made changes, I may have to let them go since I'm not willing to put up with that static behavior. I am 100% behind having to move on unless a sub genuinely wants to continue progressing and I see the potential. This can be interchangeable with mistresses as well. If you have done everything in your power to please a mistress and she is still not receiving you in a way you feel like you deserve, then she is not the one for you. Unless you are an emotional masochist, I suggest you seek another. There are plenty of each in this kinky sea, so just keep swimming. I hope this sheds some light on what I expect and if you fit these descriptions. I'm very selective and rightfully so. 
I'm the one with the power and I will use that responsibility in the most defining way that will shape our lives together. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it so that others can learn about the role of a personal submissive, comment below if you are in service to someone and what your protocols and schedules are. Subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Follow my Instagram and Twitter accounts at Mara Domina. And until next time, be safe, have fun, and keep it kinky, everyone. See, like right now, I could use a very nice brushing of my hair, but I don't have anyone to brush my hair.